Somehow I woke up out in Beverly Fucked up, smelling like that bourbon And I had a balloon I'm not sure Yeah, the girls seem polite in the club every night That's how it goes when you Hollywood person What well, going people, Lumini here back again with another episode of the Sunderland Save here on my channel. We're starting things off here in the transfer hub. I've decided that because I don't use Daniel Ballard enough, I'm going to put him on the transfer list. He's got a decent valuation and a decent rating and of a decent age. So I think we'll be able to get some money for him so that we can strengthen more of the squad in January. Everyone let me know how you feel about that transfer in the comments down below. Obviously, Sunderland fans, if you're watching, I don't personally know how important Ballard is to the club. But for me, in this save, I hope it doesn't annoy you too much. What I, But I do want to make some money so that we can make some new signings in January. I've also decided to put Nal Huggins, Max Thompson on the loan list. So hopefully they can go out and get a bit of football and uh, a bit of growth for themselves. We do start this episode off with a game against Reading. We will also be playing against uh, QPR and a cup game against Coventry, as well as starting off the January transfer window in this episode. But besides from that, it's pretty much a case of getting into the first game. One thing I did want to check quickly, I think I did this a couple episodes ago. No, I didn't actually. Because I realised that these aren't popping up in emails. So Sam McCallum had had his um, position change ready. Sorry, my brain is just stumbling all over the place right now. His position change was ready. So we're gonna make we're gonna get that done. We're gonna put him on defensive cover centre back. And also Dennis Serkin's position change is ready as well so we'll change him to a center back full time and we will also put him on defensive center back training i think besides from that everyone oh dan neil central midfield training is done as well obviously we changed daniel dan neil to a central midfielder so that we can upgrade his shooting a bit because he keeps getting into great positions for us but his shooting isn't that great so we're going to put him on playmaker training is there anybody else Ross Stewart's target man training is done, but I'm actually going to take him off of that now, I think. Because uh, I think it may be more beneficial if we put him on something a bit more like Mobile Striker. But yeah, we start the episode off in first place like we finished it in last episode. I wanted to quickly go across and check player stats. So as you can see, 28 goals in 26 games for Ross Stewart. He's absolutely flying. 10 goals ahead of Pookie, who's the closest behind him. Joe Gelhart does actually have himself 12 goals. So I was saying that I thought Joe Gelhart was underperforming a little bit. But I actually think Ross Stewart is just overperforming. And it's kind of dragging Joe Gelhart's levels down. It's making him look worse. But he actually is performing significantly well. For a new signing, 12 goals in the season is pretty decent. Also, if you look at the assists for us, we have four players in the top 10. But anyway, let me stop rambling because it's been five minutes now of me just talking rubbish. Let's get into the first game against Reading. Miete is popping up in a lot of different locations. Good work from um, Serkin out there. They're pressing high and it's not really worked out for them. Corey Evans going to chip advantage. through. Joe Gelhart will lay it back to Pritchard. Pritchard smashes one in. That's what I've been asking Pritchard to do. Pick up those little spaces. And he's done it very, very well in that. We have been asking more of Pritchard. Great run by Joe Gelhart to pull the defence open. Leaves Pritchard in that little space. You can see they're leaving men on um, Ross Stewart. So it will leave gaps for the likes of Pritchard to get in. I don't even know what goal that is for Pritchard. Fourth goal of the season. As an attacking midfielder, I'm going to need more. But if he can start getting himself in a little bit of a run, then that would be very nice indeed. Can chip through Pritchard here. He's got another attempt. Oh, it's a good strike, but Lumley does end up being a little bit too straight. It's a mistake at the back, though. And they've given it straight back to us. Mateta's got space here. I'm going to try and 
Well, it's sat up for him. Um, I was going to try and curl one with Matete. Clearly curling them isn't the thing. Maybe next time we'll try and power one and see how that goes. And he's got the oh, year Don goes around me. Can Jack Clark get back? For some reason, Year Don crossed to the edge of the box there. Just Gale Hart. News of a goal in the Blackburn Rush through it on the run. Scott, Scott Dan, I don't think us? we'll be able to keep up with him at all. He's a bit wide. Oh, good strike. And another one. Oh, it almost falls for a third time. Good saves by Lumley. Ama Diallo here. That's going to come back out to Pritchard. Evans. Oh, almost. Oh. We are rattling them a little bit here, I think. Oh, no. It's gone straight through to Miete there. Miete drags it horrifically. My God, that's a bad shot from Miete. I'm talking to Tag on the on the line. Oh, don't know what's happened there. I told Jack Clark to clear the ball, but it's rolled off, and he's just taken out Yeardom. We do go into half time 1 0 up. We have been defending for a lot of the end of that half, but we did start things off very quickly. If we can get ourselves another goal, I feel a little bit more secure. Andy Yeardom right now has been the big problem for us. Patrick Roberts, who I need to change his position, that he's learning actually. So if we can whip this one in towards Ross Stewart. We can. Ross Stewart gets a head on it, but it's a good save, Lumley. Strong hand from Lumley. I'm going to go for the same thing again. This time they are there for it. Gelhart's going to get it down. It's going to drop to Diallo. It's a good strike, but another good save by Joe Lumley. Getting some strong hands to these balls. That's a weird sentence, but yeah. Stewart. Pritchard. Gelhart. Gelhart with good dribbling. Gelhart with a great finish. We've had to be patient in the second half. But we do get our second goal. A little bit of comfort for us now in this one. That is a good bit of dribbling from Joe Gelhart though. Very good. Close control. I thought he was going to get the ball nicked off of him. from I think it was McIntyre. But he does just then. You managed to jink it round him. What a goal. And then fin the finish is amazing into the top bins. Joe Gelhart with his 13th goal of the season. Been a couple games since we've seen him score. Can Ross Stewart get in behind here? Oh, he tries to volley it, but he actually volleyed it into the ground instead. So it ended up just rolling towards Lumley, basically. Good ball to Sims. Pritchard in behind. Oh, good strike, but Lumley gets a cross on it. See if Diallo can beat Baba to a header. He does. Good strength from Diallo. We're going to try and go back to him, but we can't. Will be a 2-0 win for Sunderland at home, though. Good defensive work from us, because we were under pressure a couple of times in that game. Good work from us. I actually think we will be given an inform for that game. I know it's not like a huge, huge win like we usually get. Um, and that's what we usually give informs for. But I am actually very impressed with the defensive work. I know Pritchard obviously got a goal and assist, so it would usually go to him. But this man who is sat on the 7.8, he's the man who I want to give the inform to. The other option was Jay Matete in my head. But we're going to give it to Sam McCallum. Sam McCallum with his first inform of the season. Good work, Sam. So we remain in first place following that win over Reading. But we will move on to the QPR game, which we have a press conference to do for. So let's get that done. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the press conference. Uh, we'll be taking your questions whenever you're ready. There's been a lot of rumours and speculation around Ross Stewart and his future with Sunderland. There's also been reports that he turned down a new deal at the club. Can you talk to us a little bit about the future of Ross Stewart at this club? I don't like when stories like this get put out into the media for speculation. Um, it's an internal thing between Ross, I and the club. Obviously, everybody knows I've spoken highly about Ross this, stu this season Sorry, so far. And um, obviously, I want to hold on to him um, any means by any means necessary um sometimes things don't work out with first offers i don't think ross is immediately planning to leave the club 
following the first round of talks. So I'm sure that we will reopen talks with Ross at a convenient time and try and hash out a new deal for him. Uh, but he's still very much in our plans, obviously having a great season. And yeah, we're not planning on letting him go anywhere. With your current position in January around the corner, will you be looking to add reinforcements to your team? Like I said, we've been flying high this season um, and all the boys have had a massive part to play. Obviously, there's exceptions with the likes of Ross's scoring, but even if you look down at Ahmad and Jack for their assist, Gail Hart for helping link up the play, January is a tough window because as much as we may want to bring in players, the players that we want may not be available. Obviously, as well, we're not a club that can just brandish around a lot of money to attract big names so we kind of need to make sales to make signings and it makes stuff even tougher then because obviously it's not easy but if we can we will be looking to do deals for certain players i have a couple areas in mind that i would like to strengthen but we'll have to see what the window brings you find yourself atop the league at about the halfway point of the season do you now have a belief that you can go ahead and win the league yeah you know we're at the end of December now, going into January, um, to find ourselves in the position that we're in. You have to say that we now need to start looking at things through maybe a different lens and maybe starting to accept the fact that we should be pushing for at least a playoff place this season. I think now it's past the point of, oh, we may slip up. I think we're now entering the territory of this is what we should do and we should remain in this place and that's what i plan to do thanks very much guys so let's go straight into this one against qpr they are in 20th i believe it was um but we are away so it's going to be a tough game regardless of where they are off this road today in the western part of london why do i always hear the stadium name really close to one of the commentators here and the focus is very much on live action from the championship. It's QPR, and they face Sunderland. Thanks, Derek, as always. This should be a good game. Great atmosphere inside the stadium. We've got two teams full of quality. Some interesting matchups. And two Richards, my God, is absolutely tiny team. compared to Sims and Stewart. Look at him. <laughs> That's a sad place to put him. That's mean. He looks absolutely tiny now. Like I said, there is always that chance that for some reason against lower down the table sides that your team slips up. That's a great strike with no backlift. Just pulls out that power. Yeah, there's always the chance to slip up if you take these results for granted. Dykes literally got through about four players there to get to that header. Dykes. Going to try and go across to Richards. Into a donor. Weird save from Patterson again. Good save to stop it from going in, but leaning back for some reason. Roberts. Sims. Trying to find Richards. Again, too slow. Danny Bat's going to get in on that one. Roberts. Sims into Stewart. One on one. Ross Stewart is the man who will finish those opportunities if he gets them. We know we can count on Ross Stewart in those positions. It's a good little ball. He has to use strength to hold it up to make sure that he doesn't lose it. He gets closed out a bit, but not quite enough. Good finish, Ross Stewart. 29? 29 goals in 28. Ross Stewart having an incredible season. Another reason we need to make some money is so that we can offer Ross Stewart a new contract. Because we definitely Stephane need to be Johansson. holding on to him. Richards against Richards again. Those are off to Johansson. He's going to take a strike. That's a good shot. That's come off the crossbar. I wouldn't say we've been amazing so far, to be fair. Depot up against McCallum again, but strength wise, McCallum has the beating of Shadipo there, I'm pretty Evans. certain. Chance to play it in. Jack Clark here. Richards. Oh, maybe I should have gone one more to Sims. But half time, we are 1 0 up. We have hung on defensively, but we've done enough to be in the lead, I think. We, we've defended well enough to hold on to our lead, but second half, we kind of need to be less sloppy in this half because 
we haven't been very good on the ball in this game so far. Oh, not the pass I wanted from Ross Stewart sends us into a bit of a weird area, but we can make it work, I'm sure. Need some movement out wide or something, boys. Well, they keep passing away. Richards picked up a good area there. Can cross this one towards Stewart. Ah, oh, that's the kind of goal that we love to see. Those are the kind of crosses that we've waiting to get, and we finally do get one in this game. Ross Stewart has his second and 30th goal of the season. Great cross, great header. That is a great header. The end can't even move to get it. It's so far in the corner. Great goal. 2 0. We're feeling a bit more comfortable now. Not 100% because QPR have been dangerous, to be fair. But we're feeling a bit better about things. Tete's going to be the one asked to go shoulder to shoulder Willick. with him. Willock gets it to Johansson. Well, good save from Patterson. Going to bring off Jack Clark here because he is tiring. Uh, I'm going to bring on Michu out wide, I think. I haven't mind, uh, minded Michu on that right-hand side. Ilyas Sher coming on as well for Shadipo, who was incredibly tired. Short corner, here. Short corner from QPR. We go to the edge of the box to Adoma. Clark Slater, Dykes, does get a strike on it again, Patterson, he, it's a good set, like, I'm I'm thankful for the save, but the positions that he's taking up are so strange, that's a very good save though, Roberts tries to nick it away from Willock, but doesn't, does get back in, it's going to go across to Clark Slater, he will pass it again, it's another good save from Patterson, my god, going to bring on Dan Neal late here, Dan Neal's just going to carry this forward or it carry it off the pitch, apparently. That wasn't necessarily the plan, but I guess it's better than nothing. That is going to be the end of the game. It's a 2-0 win for Sunderland. What just happened with the time, though? It stopped at three and then added another eight seconds to the end. That was weird. But, yeah, good... Good win really for nice us. We had to defend to, pretty, pretty well, though. It was quite tough. So, uh, well, this man has given us of yeah, to lucky for us. We got Ross Stewart, Stewart to finish off our attempt. Well, we Good header, time, though. He was far too shot. I don't think we're going to give an inform for this one because I don't think we necessarily played well enough to deserve one. It probably would either be Patterson or Stewart, but I, like I said, I don't think we... I mean, if you look at the shots, we had three and scored two. don't think we played particularly well, but we won the game. So that's kind of all that matters. But yeah, that will be another win for us. Another two goals for Ross Stewart up to 31 now. So as I said might happen, Michu has been recalled by PSG and Sims have been recalled by Everton. I think that's quite harsh to recall them. They were still getting decent time, but... They obviously want them back, so there's not really much we can do. We've got a little youth scout update. Obviously, we don't have a lot of youth scout players right now because, uh, yeah, we just we haven't got money, basically. Um, Harrison Hudson is getting maybe close to the point where I might look at him, but definitely not ready right now to come in and do any work for us. Besides from that, we're just advancing and doing training. Um, if anything happens in the transfer window, I will let you know. Do have a loan offer coming in for Huggins here. Uh, like I said, we are just going to accept that because we do want him to go out and get some playtime. Uh, we do have a press conference to do, but I'm not going to do it because we've already had one um, in this episode. I'll just do this off camera and then we'll get into the game. All right, here we go. Coventry in the FA Cup. I would usually play this through highlights, but considering we've only played one other game. Max Thompson's already on the bench. Oh, yeah, because the uh, thingy got recalled, didn't they? Like I said, I'm going to put Dan Neal in for this one for Matete, I think. I know his sharpness will mean that he's getting minuses, but that kind of just is what it is. I'm going to leave Gail Hart. We'll start Richards. Um, and I'm going to give Tag now to your game as well. And I'm also going to bring Bennett up to the bench instead of Roberts or Bonetto up to the bench. And I'm going to give Elise a game over Serkin in this one with Ballard dropping out altogether. A couple changes, nothing too wild. Um, 
We are still waiting to see if anyone's going to come in for any of our players. Attention is palpable, and you can understand why. Starter. Two high-level sides see. about to face each other, and it's anyone's guess how this is going to end up. Stay with us. See we'll me beefing managers over there. I don't give a fuck. Thanks, Derek Gray, for the help with that one. Todd Kane coming forward here now. Jack Clark is up against him, but gets faked out. Allen's going to go back to the edge of the box to Hamer. Previ like going to well, try and curl no, one, but goal, doesn't really end up curling it at well, all. In fact, you should really be testing the goal. We're a bit slow on on the ball right now. That's a bit better. Bit zipping the move here. Richards is on the edge. Oh, that's a terrible shot from Richards. Jack Clark going to set one out. It's not far from Jack Clark. A yellow card for Corey Evans, really? Really? Can we see the foul again? I mean, it's not a great challenge, to be fair. I've heard trying to get fancy to flick it over my head there, but doesn't quite get it off. Or Stewart coming through. Chess it down. Oh, he's gone for a weird shot. If he just goes for the volley there, I think he actually has a better chance of scoring. But for some reason, he went for the scissor kick. And it ends up just not really being anything. Oh, at least put a really good ball across there. For some reason, no Sunderland player gambled into that space. Oh, Gelhart. Shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have tried that. I thought Gelhart was coming short to run, but he actually just came short. So, nil-nil, I mean, we haven't played terribly. We've been sloppy, I would say, more than anything. Uh, both sides have been relatively sloppy. Uh, going up here. Can feed through Stuart again. Simon Moore. Those are usually guaranteed goals for Ross Stewart, but not this time. Simon Moore is one of the first keepers to stop him from scoring a one-on-one. -on -one. Good win back from Dan Neal, though. Jack Clark, they try and find Joe Gelhart out wide, but Bidwell does manage to sweep back and get the ball. Can Richards win that? That should be a foul, ref. Ref! Just looking ahead to another game coming up for you from the chance to shoot. Tag now. He asked to make a save for the first time in the game. And he does make the save. Saves that he hasn't been making a lot of. Jack Clark trying to close O'Hare. Oh, Gikrez has gone straight through there. That's really poor defending from us. That's really poor for defending from us. From us almost scoring at the other end to conceding. A very poor goal. Disappointed in the boys there. Well, we won't get tired of watching this. Go short. Jack Clark doesn't go. No one goes to. No one goes to Geekers. Danny Bat stood right there. Doesn't go to him. That is disappointing from us. I don't know who Ross Stewart's even trying to find with that pass. To be honest, at least you need to get a better tackle in on there. Danny Bat's come out as well. Previlak. Good tackle, that McCallum. Benete. Matete. <laughs> Richards. Oh, Good ball to Ross Stewart. He can sprint through. Oh, it's not a good strike from Ross Stewart. Ross Stewart not at it this game. We are going to bring on Pritchard here because Richards hasn't had a particularly good game, I'll be honest. Diallo as well. Good tackle, McCallum. Where's the help, though, from Diallo? Now Diallo's just getting sprinted past. What is he doing? No. Tagnauti was literally... He was literally walking up the field. Tagnauti was walking up the field when that went in. Watch this. Poor from Diallo. But watch Tagnauti. Where's he going? Where's he going? He's probably not saving it, but where's he going? Unfortunately, it is going to be a loss, which I don't think we necessarily deserved. But we we also haven't deserved to win at all. That's a bad challenge. Referee, are you okay? At least gets in on that one. Jack is going to have it late here. Find Stewart. 
Stewart gets us a late goal back. I don't think it's going to be enough to do anything, but we are going to switch tactics at least. McCallum's picked up a knock here. He is not a goalkeeper that I want to be using. Comes out, misses the ball. Goes back in, misses the ball. Oh, my God. We've gone on constant pressure, and it seems to have broken our brains because we cannot at all get anywhere near the ball right now. Allen's going to swing it in again. McCallum's going to head it clear, but we don't have... For what? No! This referee is definitely working for Coventry. 100% working for Coventry. The Jacku well, nicks it. We've got you two minutes left. We're going to try and loft well, it towards Ross Stewart. We've got a late attack here if we can get a good touch. Ross Stewart. Ross Stewart! With one minute left in the game, Ross Stewart has equalised for Sunderland. Absolutely huge. It looked like Coventry were actually going to see the game out, but somehow we win it back to Jacku with a long ball forward. And Ross Stewart, after having a poor finishing game, has given us an equaliser. We can't make a quick tactical switch because obviously we are on very attacking. I'm not going to quite go back to what we're on, but we're going to dial it down a little bit. What happens now? And officially, even when all so it's going to be a replay. I mean, it's going to be a replay away at Coventry, but hey, we'll take that over losing the game outright. I would take that. Ross Stewart took his time to warm up. But what were the goal times on that? 88th and 90th minutes. Ross Stewart does get us a draw, so we will have a replay in the FA Cup with another chance to go through that is going to be the end of this episode i wonder if they scheduled in that replay yet not yet i imagine it's probably going to be this month right so that may extend the amount of time that we have the uh in the next episode but that's going to be the end of this one i'm going to advance a little bit just to see if it does get put in on the schedule yeah, it's going to be our next game. The first game of next episode will be against Coventry in the FA Cup. I'm going to advance to that game, just do this training quickly. That will be nice for him. We will start next episode off with a press conference as well. But besides from that, that is going to be the end of this one. Um, we, I don't know. We may end up now simming one of the league games um, and playing this what the FA Cup because obviously since we played the first game I feel like we should definitely play the replay so I think that's what we might do hopefully as well, well we'll be able to make a sale at some point so that we can get some new bodies in considering we lost two bodies but yeah that's going to be the end of this episode uh, I hope you enjoyed it please like subscribe turn on the notification bell to get notified about when the next episode is available to you and I hope to see you in it peace uh, I'm saying bye to all the lies and all the times you cried Saying that I wasn't right, yet I was right by your side You manipulator, playing games, your friends